What? All right, and so begins the first episode of the what was it? Ass Planet podcast. I can't Ass remember. Planet. What, Ass Planet. Ass Planet. All right, that's what we're gonna call this for now. Um, name pending. I am Roland. I have been on Bnet for six, going on seven years very soon. And my favorite thing in Destiny is destroying people in the Crucible. Uh, how about we transition on to Makeshift? Who are you, Makeshift? Hi guys, I'm Makeshift. I'm a mentor on the Bungie forums. I'm going on five years, and my favorite thing to do in Destiny is hopefully nerf the Fell Winner's Lie. Oh, the Fell Winner's Lie. My favorite part of Iron Banner. Hello All everyone, right. I'm Progo. I've been on Bnet for about four years now, and my favorite thing to do in Destiny is to get exotic drops that my friends want in front of them. Oh, That's a lot of fun. Very oh. nice. Yeah. <sighs> Flaunting Galahorn is a lot of fun, though. It's great. It's like, oh yeah, I have Galahorn, you don't. <laughs> what should I have today? <laughs> they get very angry. Alright, then how uh, about Mr. T-Blocks? I'm T-Blocks. I've been on Bungie.net for just over a year. Noob! And, Woo! <laughs> and my favorite thing to do on Destiny is flaunt exotics that people don't have and use the Soros regime of the Crucible. <laughs> Mr. Omar. Uh, my name is Archer, and I've been on Bungie.net for about seven years now. And my new favorite thing to do in Destiny is to flaunt my Gallahorn in front of people. I'm, I'm feeling a lot of go. flaunting going on with you guys. You guys aren't very nice people, are you? No, no not at all. No. No. Really. all right. oh. And how about Mr. Burninator? I'm El Burninator. Um, I'm the old man of this podcast. It's eight and a half years. And my favorite thing to do in Destiny is bitch about the people that have Gallahorn. <laughs> well, in that case, You're I want you to know that yesterday Gallo. I sharded an extra Gallahorn. All right, does that make <laughs> you feel better? Actually, no. yeah. Okay. No, no, it right, doesn't. Good to know that some people are fortunate. All right. Well, speaking of fortune, I hearing rumors, at least from you guys, that Bungie's planning on changing some of the fortunes in the Crucible, shifting things up with ammo crates. Do you guys have anything to talk about with that? Yeah, that was one of the uh, milestones mentioned in one of the last weekly updates. Let me look it up real quick. It was on 3.12. It was mentioned that they really want to change how the ammo crates, they didn't really specify, be it heavy or special, uh, change the flow of the crucible, which I suspect means either higher or lower, I'm guessing lower, drops of both those types. Now, I... What do you guys think that would do to the crucible? No more Fellwinners lie. No more Fellwinners <laughs> lie. Um, I don't play Crucible. Add Juju uh, kick your ass. Yeah. Bad Juju when... has nothing on my thorn. I want you to know that. <laughs> I have Definitely one of the issues that I see currently in the Crucible is the fact that special weapons see a lot of representation, even over primaries in a lot of cases. Uh, there's a lot of people running around with, you know, agility, extra agility on, just shotgunning people around every corner. And I don't know if uh, homogenization of a weapon sandbox like that is really what we're going for. Yeah. As like... far as competitive play. Go playing ahead. it earlier today, just so many people use shotguns, and then whenever heavy ammo, he heavy ammo drops, like people will just run for that. And that like that's that's okay, but it completely stops the flow of the game. Like everyone just runs for the heavy ammo as soon as it drops. So I don't know how you fix that, but. Well, actually, on on the the point of that, one of the recent changes to heavy ammo was the fact that uh, on death enemies no longer drop purple bricks which greatly reduced the amount of heavy ammo that's recycled throughout the course of a match. And what do you guys think that did? Like, do you like that as opposed to the previous, uh, the way it was done? On the one hand, I like that I get rockets to the face far less than I did normally, because I always get rockets to the face. I'm very fortunate <laughs> like that. But on the other hand, I kind of like the aspect where if you weren't careful with your usage of heavy ammo, you give your enemy an advantage because they get to pick up your heavy ammo. So I thought there was an interesting dynamic there. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't see that big of a difference, though, as far as the games are concerned, how the outcomes go. Um, if you dominated heavy before, you dominated most of the game, and if you dominate heavy now, you still dominate most of the game. So... And I'm impartial on either or, but I kind of like the previous system a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to build on that, that when uh, ammo dropped when you killed people, it gave you like that reward for killing that guy that's running around with Galahorn or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're better than the guy has a yeah. missile launcher. You just no. killed him. 
Yes, Let me play the devil's ad- advocate for a sec, because, uh, I, of course, I don't know what the heck the developers are thinking, but um, my personal opinion on why they did that was one of the things that happened is when you have Gallowhorn ammo and you have that initial heavy ammo exchange between both teams, if anyone came out on top still with their heavy ammo, they had enough of it to really last through to the next drop of heavy ammo. So you ended up with one winning team always having heavy ammo if he was careful. That is so very the, true. The snowball yeah. became more snowbally, which I think was kind of what their design mind was. But there's definitely room for, you know, opinions on your side of the spectrum as well, which is that it is damn satisfying to take down someone with a heavy machine gun or a rocket and then pull out your own. Yeah. To be yeah. honest though, I think it would be interesting if they did it sort of like Halo 3 style where it, they spawn like let's say ammo drops, all the ammo drops and locations at the beginning of the match. So people would go out and battle for them right away, instead of people you know picking them up randomly or camping the respawns. I think that'd be a lot more interesting, in my opinion. I'll agree with that. Any, yeah. Anyone else have opinions on that? I think a few definitive locations for special ammo would help a lot. Um, create it into more of something to fight over. Yeah. Make instead it more competitive. Of- Instead of giving less ammo per special ammo drop, just make it so they're harder to get. Yeah. All right. So, so basically, have them become an objective in and of itself. Say so you're playing control. You obviously have your three uh, control point objectives that are going to give you more points. But then at the same time, you're like, oh, do I want to hold this point or do I want to, you know, dive off it to try to go get some some ammo that may help me later on in the match? Yeah. yeah. It might it might turn into a uh, you know more of a conscious thing than uh, oh hey I spawned at the found I, I definitely I definitely grab. agree with that. Um, yeah, that's great. Because like, one, one of the things that, you know, obviously Bungie needs to consider moving forward in the Crucible is, you know, what is a meaningful choice to a player in the midst of a firefight? You know, it's not just what weapon do I select, but do I have the ammo for this weapon that I want to select? You know, is my super up? Is their super up? All those questions come into your mind when you're playing multiplayer, and that's what kind of makes it an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Anyways. Right. Speaking of interesting things, one of you mentioned a rumor that intrigues me, and... I'm not very in the loop in these kinds of things. But apparently we're going to have a new social area for Destiny in the Reef, question mark? I think it was data mined. I think um, the data miners had like some sort of social tower-like area in the Reef that could possibly come in the next DLC. Mm-hmm. What are your guys' thoughts on something like that? I mean, I thought the tower was our social area. Well, anything's mm-hmm. better than just being in the same spot. Throughout all your time playing the game, yeah. if anything changes, Having the scenery will be nice. Some yeah. diversity is nice. Well, there were some I mean, questions as to whether uh, you know how we had Eris Morn kind of as the bounty hub for uh, the Dark Below, and if you know all the the bounties and even perhaps additional vendors. This is all speculation. Uh, might for the House of Wolves might be at an extended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My only worry now is that. Uh, when they do create something like that, if there's another bounty vendor over in the reef, and people are going to move on to another they have to go to the tower to turn in certain that bounties, is. and then go back to orbit to go to the reef to turn in other bounties. Uh, and travel back time would definitely and- be an issue, yeah. I that was, could be problematic. Uh, hmm, maybe they just just be different types of bounties, you know? I don't it's know. True. Unless they what add a, a dedicated slot for those bounties, I think people will complain. Oh. Oh yeah, expand the bounties again. That would work. That would be interesting. Do do. As as well as, uh, do you guys remember which magazine Luke Smith had the little um, interview with, where he said they definitely want to change up the progression from how vanilla to Crota's End went, as far as Crota's End to uh, House of Wolves, as far as you know, not resetting exotics or you know providing a better armor path for not immediately invalidating the raid armor that you spent hours getting in Crota's End. <laughs> by having vendor gear that has a higher level. Yeah, I don't yeah. know which magazine. I'm going to assume it might have been IGN. I mean, usually it is. IGN or NeoGAF, I don't recall which. Oh, yeah, NeoGAF probably. Most oh, of yeah. One of those two. They tend to do but that. But they're definitely going to be switching up the progression systems, which, you know, a social area might fit into that, that whole design paradigm. All right, I'm, I'm interested in the theme of the tower. I mean, what will it look like? I mean... I mean, it's a completely different era than just above Earth. I mean, you have to think of the lighting effects, you know, the scenery. I mean, it's it might be a, a whole new yeah. world. I mean, the real house of Queen. It's, I believe it's going to be um, just a place we can dock our ships in the gigantic miasma of what the oh, Reefborn Awoken live in. You which think is basically like a, a lot a of wrecked ships. 
You think like a flotilla in Mass Effect, you know, with the uh, um, quarant yeah. quarant uh, season. Oh yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, that'd be very. And cool. of course, they'll be sh taking shelter behind asteroids and the gigantic destroyed hulls of ships and such. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be sort of a sneaky place, in my opinion. Yeah. That'd, that'd be, be pretty cool. cool. I'd also yeah. like to see if they add anything more to what the definition of a social area is, because right now the tower area is sort of a social area, but sort of just a hub to turn in your things and buy new equipment as well. I mean, again, we're kind of limited in our social aspects by the D-pad, yeah. and uh, I honestly don't see that many players using the team voice option in almost any activities, unfortunately, yeah. so I don't get the chance to talk, talk with random people beyond my initial party. I actually met my first person that had fire team voice uh, this week in the Iron Banner. It's the first mm -hmm. time I've ever ran into anyone that actually spoke. Um, yeah. But I did find an article on IGN about, or it's a video, so I can't watch it right now. But it's about a wish list for what they want the new social area to be. And there's a lot of comments down below. And one of the prevailing things I'm seeing is uh, that people would be interested in seeing as a hub for mini games. Things like mm. sparrow racing, cards, uh, indoor range, things like that. Um, yeah. Aside from kicking around the purple ball or the soccer ball, uh, do you guys think something like that would be interesting? Oh, definitely. Uh, very interesting. In, yeah. in addition to, uh, like, I, I find it interesting that one of the, the most exciting things for me initially when I, when I booted up Destiny and went to the tower was the fact I was like, holy shit, there's a soccer ball here. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. And just that little <laughs> moment of... of Holy crap! This is awesome. I feel can be expanded upon in any systems like that. You know, be it cards, be it anything make, more. Interesting. Make a yellow ball. Mm. Oh, yeah. Ooh. 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 Right there. different colored balls. Mm -hmm. I'm just make my mind there. That generation ball pit. Do you guys think the ball like pit? Yeah. Get a rock that wall. would be useful within the world of Destiny, you know, considering how much time they would have to spend to develop something like a mini game like that, would you consider that a worthy investment? Yeah, I, I think with how often they flaunt the social aspect of Destiny and the fact that yeah, it doesn't have that much of a social aspect, I think little games like that where you can just get groups of people together in a competitive but kind of casual way, I think it would really benefit the game where oh, yeah. you just have people come together, screw around, play some invented card game they come up with and suddenly get new friends that are doing greats together. I definitely agree. Has anyone here ever played The Witcher? Yes. Very, very, or one very or two. little. Then you know how much magic there is if you can just interact with NPCs on the level of playing a minigame with them, like dice or um, <laughs> arm wrestling or any other, any other contest. Um, so I feel like with real players, that sort of meaningfulness of a minigame would be way expanded upon if it was actually your friends and not some tavern owner. Or, or in a sim similar vein, I mean, not to make an MMO comparison, but look at what Hearthstone is doing to WoW. A lot of people just boot up Hearthstone in the middle of you know downtime of a, of a social game oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, obviously, oh, that, there's yeah, lots of comparisons comparison. that can be drawn between an activity like that and a larger social setting. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it sounds great, but the problem is, is that what would it take to actually get that in the game right now with Bungie? I mean, I imagine, you know, they're thinking about, you know, they're working hard on new content for Destiny on top of what's already on the, the disc. And then you got Destiny 2 to consider, and they have a lot of things on their plate. I don't know if they would have the resources to put something like that in the game right now. Very true. As I've said before, if you're expecting any large changes to Destiny, you're going to have to wait for Comet, or if you're considering core changes, probably to Destiny 2. Because yeah. once the code is in place, it is a lot more difficult to make major changes without unbalancing the feel or just the balance of the game in general. Mm -hmm. Well, the saving grade to the game right now is the physics itself, the gameplay itself, are great. But oh, very solid. Yeah, and that's what's keeping people playing. That's what, honestly, if if they were going to get something right, if they had to get something wrong and something right with the first installment, I'm glad they still have that very solid core gameplay. Because that can be expanded upon with tertiary and secondary systems like what we're talking about, the social aspects, very easily, as opposed to trying to fix some broken gunplay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, very good. Now, speaking of gunplay, uh, how about we talk about the Handsome Edition that's coming out? Because I think we're all pretty excited for that. Yes. Yeah. Aren't we all getting it? I mean, or at least planning to get it sometime. I'll be getting it yeah. eventually when I stop being poor, yes. Yeah, I'm I pre-ordered it. it. Tonight, on Tuesday. Yeah, I pre-ordered it as well. All right. I, 
I enjoy Borderlands, I've... and I'll probably end up getting the Handsome Edition myself, though Borderlands and Destiny do share a gripe that I have with RPG-like shooters, which is I don't like how bullet-spongy a lot of the mobs get, even with high-level weapons. But, personal gripe. That's I mean, fair. I can argue against that. I mean, yes, it, it, they are annoying, but once you consider having you know a fire team you know, in the game, you can't just you know have a boss with normal health that's going to get downed almost immediately. You're going to have to put some time into it. But I would say it'd be better if the bullet sponge bosses did have more than, you know, walk around and shoot rockets from, you know, one place to the other place. I think they should have more of a tactic and more of a, you know, thing to do than that to make it more interesting. I think that's the biggest problem with them. Well, again, I hate to make the MMO comparison, but if we're talking about what it means to take down a, a boss monster with several other players... Obviously, it takes a while to get used to what you want to put into an encounter like that. You know, you see a lot of older school MMO bosses being simply hit this guy until it dies and dodge the various skills that he puts within his melee range. But recently in games, you've seen a lot more, you know, there's patterns on the ground that you have to dodge or line of sight him or do various little mechanics. And honestly, I look forward to that being implemented both in, say, Borderlands and future installments, which I believe Gearbox confirmed they're doing Borderlands 3, correct? Borderlands 3. Yeah. They actually said they were recruiting all of the best designers in the field. They said they'll give them a raise if they want to come to Texas. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> but we'll definitely probably see that moving forward in Borderlands 3 and future Destiny installments as well, because obviously both games share a lot of crossover. Yeah. Raids have a lot of potential as well, I mean, from what we already have. I'm curious if a, a new installment of Borderlands is going to take a page from Destiny and something like that with the increased multiplayer and perhaps just like the increased difficulty of what they want to do with that. We'll see. Again, speculation. They might do a raid. They already started doing those mini DLCs for like $5 where you get a raid boss and all that. Mm. Mm. And So it's not far-fetched. I think taking a page out of the Destiny book is especially where the Vault of Glass is concerned, would be cool for a game like Borderlands because it's more than just a complete this kind of objective puzzle. There's mm-hmm. a lot more depth to it. you got to figure out how to do it. Then you got to actually have the skill to execute it. And at least the first few times, once you've done it yeah. enough, it's really easy to do. I mean, I could do the Vault blindfolded now. But well, yeah. You know what's funny about the vault specifically, I don't mean the rep real quick, but I want to insert this point, is that one of the sections that made the vault so enjoyable was the Gorgon's Mage, which is kind of a callback to the physics puzzles in Half-Life 2, where it's a gun game that this encounter <laughs> involves direct, no direct gunplay, which honestly throws a lot of FPS players for a loop. You know, a situation they can't shoot their way through? What? Yeah, and I think it was an interesting contrast to the game, because it just changed things up. It was so different from everything else you've been doing so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you originally got to that point, like when we were originally doing the raid, like when we first started doing it, so you got to that point, you start shooting it, and you die, like, instantly. It really confused mm-hmm. about it, but, uh, you know, after, after a while, you learn that you have to stay away from them, and how it works, and as a, as a group, you have to overcome that. Mm-hmm. Well, in the whole realm of FPS shooters, well, RPG shooters... I'd say that, yeah, you know, you can take the raids from uh, Destiny and the non-shooting aspects of, like, the Vault of Glass and put it into Borderlands. At the same time, I don't want to see a game like Borderlands try to take too much from Destiny when they've been working with this genre for five years already and have done a pretty good job with it. Mm-hmm. And then go and take something from Destiny, who's been out, but well, that game's been out for, like, six months, and then try to change everything based off of the success of one AAA title. Mm-hmm. You definitely take your own spin on it, because again, if you're just going to make the copy of another game, well, we all know how Call of Duty works. Absolutely. Yeah. Although they're pretty successful, too, so I'm not going to bash them. <laughs> yeah, but, you yeah, know. You can't bash the, the money-making aspect of that too much, I suppose. That's, yeah, that's just the name, though. You know, the name sells it. Like, Halo, yeah. the name sells it. Fair enough. Yeah. Apparently, Battlefield found out the hard way that that doesn't work too well. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. All, All right. Your updates, you know? We can talk about your updates. I we can talk about his updates. All right, All right Burn, tell us about your updates. Stop, guy. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Someone just got eaten by a robot. <laughs> Something just yeah. happened and I don't know what it is. All right, All right tell us about your updates. Om nom nom nom. Rip and rip. Microphone so I don't lag as much. Um Yeah. I mean, most of you already know. The people watching this will know because I'm linking this in the next update. 
because they're glorious. It's basically you take all of the information from like the prevailing week or time period between updates to collect all the good threads and whatnot, all the things that happen like game nights, promotions, if people had a birthday or an on-site birthday, that kind of thing. Basically, it lets people go into one thread and get a summary of what happened in the entire community over the past week. It's really, it's a lot like uh, the Bungie's, you know, updates that they have with uh, the website. I can pull it up. Mm-hmm. Like their news, like the Bungie Weekly Update. It's a lot like that, except it's more community-based than here at Bungie-based. It's what like, we're doing, not what they're doing. Absolutely. And, and it's we great do some pretty cool stuff, just saying. Oh, yeah. Well, great stuff. Which my favorite thing about this update is that I'll pull up threads from people I've never heard about. And just say, hey, you're going on this update. And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> you have no so, choice in the matter, but you should be excited. Exactly. So uh, Rag Norvax is a user that I spotlighted in the last one. And his brother was in the, I think it was the Air Force. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've never heard of this guy in my life. And I'll probably never talk to him again. But for that brief moment, you know, it gives people the opportunity to see this thread that's important. At least... By my perspective, something that matters a little bit more mm-hmm. than tier one. Um, yeah, but it, it, it's a little more important than everything else to find, and they, it may not be sitting and trending for very long because it's not destiny related. It's not LFG. <laughs> it, it immortalizes the important things a little bit longer than they otherwise would be. But I was going to say that's the other side of it, besides just you know providing an update for people who are away from the community, calling attention to things that people in the community might not otherwise see. Exactly. Now, if you browse exactly. a certain sub forum and you don't browse another sub forum and you go and check out this update, hey, look, what's going on in Destiny or what's going on in Off Topic or what's going on in the seventh column? Well, yeah, I think that's column. my favorite part about these updates is I spend a lot of time either browsing Off Topic, I don't post a whole lot, or browsing the community forum, and this update pulls from everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I get to see all sorts of cool stuff I'd never see, anyways. I think that's something the new users don't usually realize is that a lot of users gravitate specifically towards one or two of the forums, and they know that forum generally in and out. Yeah. And so, you know, it provides a nice mix, and I applaud you for for doing that. I was really excited to read it the first time it came up. The first time. Um, But, uh, yeah, usually the whole formula is that I'll pull up one from trending or highest rated in uh, off-topic and community, and then I'll go through latest, and I'll go probably down five, six pages and just pull from all those threads. And then I'll go yeah. down to page 10 of either of any forum and I'll find one thread that I want that I thought, oh, this died a little too early and I'll just pull it back up from the grave. That's awesome. Okay, so yeah. Burns playing God with threads on. I am playing God. <laughs> <laughs> I do that Somebody's anyway. Gotta. I'm going to ban someone on the friends list just let them know that I'm playing God. <laughs> Sounds like a fun time. Who do you want me to hit, Burn? Huh? Who do you want me to hit? <laughs> I'm getting you right now. You don't no. <laughs> but on the subject of hitting things, uh, Progo, you wanted to hit on something that you are the PR man for. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, sure. Yeah. Let me just take myself to orbit in Destiny so I don't get blown up by creepy monsters. Yeah. I, you're I, playing I, Destiny I, this yeah, whole come time? On. You you're you're, you're, you're supposed to be man. focused on us right now, not on Destiny. <laughs> okay. That's what that annoying clicking has been in the background. I don't well, know if you get your shameless of, plug now. You hear like, little phone clicks going on. How can you expect to be a legend in the making if you can't dodge alien shots and talk really fast into a yeah. microphone at the same time? For God's exactly. sake, I'm taking on traffic in GTA right now. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> the various crisis. levels of success, mind you. But. I mean, to be fair, the last time really I did bad. a podcast, I tried to play Marathon, and I ended up breaking the podcast. So, oh, yeah, that's not good. That's the two bad. of them are more successful than I am when podcasting and talking um, or playing games. But anyways, Progo, fire away. Yep. All right. So, back in the day... PC gamers got Halo 2, and it was glorious, even though there were some errors with it, um, which are kind of humorous in hindsight, I suppose. Well, it's been a long time since Halo's been on PC, and Burn, are you doing something unholy to my profile? Did you stop that? Okay, I'm sorry. Back to the topic. Um, So there's been a few pushes by the Halo PC community itself to maintain 
um, the Halo experience on PC. Custom Edition was a really big one. And that was really awesome. And some very talented people worked on that. And it was a great community and all that. But the trouble is it's all still based on Halo CE. And that's pretty darn dated at this point. Um, engines old, models are old. Um, it's it's just old. It belongs in a bit of a museum. <laughs> and uh, what what happened is that a bunch of people thought, hey, you know, we should have a newer one on PC. And so there were a few different movements to um, make a fan game. One of those that really caught on was when the Chunkier Bean and company decided hey, we'll make it ourselves. And starting last July, they got featured on this thing called CE3, which is a live stream, and they got a very positive feedback on their first build. And fast forward to now, and we just released um, some high-res screenshots of our assets and a preview of the current build. And where it stands is that we're bringing a a community-made game to PC... Um, it's free not only because we want it to be free, but also because we can't actually charge a cent because it's technically fan art. Sued. Sued. <laughs> exactly. Ah. All underneath the fair use policy. Um, we did a lot of research to make sure what we were doing was all right. That's real pretty. So what yeah. is the scope of this game that you guys are creating? Because I'm curious myself, honestly. Oh, yeah. So the scope is... Um, well, actually, I'll just talk about what you guys saw if you looked at the post that I made a while back that revealed it. Um, what you right, saw wait, was I'm going to interject map. real quick. Burn, oh. when you post this with this update, make sure you include Progo's thread just so people can see what we're oh, talking yeah, about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll make yeah, the visual is important. All right. Continue, Progo. I apologize okay. for interrupting. No, that's fine. It's a conversation yeah. after all. <laughs> um, so where we stand is we have that beautiful test map you saw, and we're working on recreating older maps. Um I don't think we've made, beyond the test map, I don't think we've improved on anything ourselves, made our own maps, but that's inevitable as well. You know, the community can make, test out their own, take their own hand at the ultimate forge, which is making a 3D mesh and throwing it into Unity and adding assets and making from the ground up an entirely new map, Um, which you need skills to do, but it's pretty awesome. And, uh... So we're going to let the community sort of make the maps they want when the time comes. Currently, though, we're trying to get a few classic maps and a stable game that you can play Slayer and CTF and other classic game types in, all sort of feeling like Halo 3. Hmm. Very cool. So your guys' focus is multiplayer and trying to provide a PC arena for the PC players who are missing out on some of the newer Halo installments. Oh, and I would note that it's actually also um, it's Windows, Mac, and Linux. We're building it in Unity, um, which has default, um, what's the term, compatibility with lots of operating systems, even with consoles, but that's just bad news if we try to go to those, so <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> no consoles. So, so uh, go okay, sorry, no, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, once you guys get your, your own maps up off the ground, obviously you guys are going to build the scripts to do the first person and stuff like that. Um, are you going to provide those scripts to the community once they want to start making their own maps, or are they going to have yeah. to build their own version? Currently, our project's all on GitHub. I mean, it's already um, open source. Awesome. Um, uh, the thing is, what we want to do is, obviously, while it's in such an infant stage, really have us be the only the team of people that the chunkier beam lets in be the only people working on it to keep things organized once it's stable um and we have a basic palette of environment stuff and weapons and vehicles release it to the community um and let the community create stuff which we then implement into the game mm-hmm. because obviously people are going to want a central source for the build because if Everybody starts branching off of their own builds. There'll be no one left to like combine them all and make a master build. Indeed. And that's just a really big mess. And so the team will exist for a long time, I think, just maintaining it. Um, but the push for content will eventually come from the community, which is pretty awesome. I uh, know one last thing from me. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned in your post is you are looking for additional programmers and a few 2D and 3D artists. Now, what kind of experience are you guys looking for just so the, the community isn't scared off by the the, uh, the label of 2D or 3D artists? Oh, yeah, and bullet points. Those things are scary. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so programmers, we do 
we do kind of set a high bar for because we need people who have experience with games. We don't have, I mean, our programmers are awesome people, but they're already working in their free time. They don't have time to teach anyone. Gotcha. Um, and so we need people who have game design or at least Unity experience. And that's uh, C Sharp mostly. Yep. Uh, then for artists, though, for 3D, if someone's willing to take, you know, a few weeks and learn Blender or SketchUp, they can talk to me and then, um, which is Progo. I'm the OP of that post. Sent me a message if you're hearing this and want to do it. You just learn a 3D modeling program, learn how to make meshes. Like, could you make me a cone? <laughs> or 10 different types of cones. And then a fusion coil to blow them up. And that's that would work. Um, so we have, for the programming side of things, we need advanced people. For the artistic side of things, uh, it varies. Shoot me a message if you're interested. <laughs> awesome. Get involved. I mean, mods are awesome for all kind of community, and I'm sure everyone who owns a PC would be happy to get something Halo-esque to play. I know oh, I miss yeah. multiplayer. And for years. people that are interested in the project but aren't as savvy uh, technically, uh, is there any place we can go to check out updates on this, new news? Do we just have to harass you a lot? You got a website? Okay. I'll do that regardless. Currently harass me. Right. But we yet do have a website under construction. Um, let me check real quick. It should appear at installation. That's the English word installation. Zero one dot org. All right. Um, so there's nothing there right now except a big coming soon page. Our last website was pretty crappy, so it's gone. <laughs> mm-hmm. The right. news will definitely spread throughout the Halo community. So for updates, just keep an eye on the heartbeat of the Halo community. You'll hear stuff eventually. Or you can talk to me. All awesome. right. So we're going to harass you in the meantime. Then we'll check out installation01.org when the time comes. Very cool. Uh, speaking of cool stuff, uh, the podcast is going to come out after the fact. So if anyone's interested in participating, you are a little out of luck. But tonight we're having a community carnage in Grand Theft Auto Five. I think everyone here is going to be there except for Progo. Oh yeah, because Progo's lame. Xbox One. Don't rub that in. Lame. It's okay. We're Anyways. not judging you. Master I race. Am. Master I race. So. The I'm one thing I always enjoy ben, him, ben, him. plugging a lot is the community carnage. And I think everyone here has participated in carnages in the past. Do you guys want to give oh. the community a little rundown on what they are? Because I keep running into people that don't know what it is. And as much as I love explaining it, maybe you guys can uh, go in a little bit more. Well, it's an old group, man. I mean, come on. These guys are newbies. Give them some yeah. credit. The community Carnage is a great place to talk and then get mad at other members of the community. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Depends on what game you're playing. I mean, I'm pretty new to the group myself, but definitely when I ran Carnage two weeks ago, uh, as far as Destiny goes, the community has obviously expanded on what it used to be in Halo. And having both old members and new members participate was something that, you know, as a mentor and as someone who's really wants to try and, you know, h- include the new Destiny members as much as possible and get them involved and get the new blood in, it was great. Like, I loved seeing, you know, people didn't even know what was going on, and then they came into the the, the lobbies, they were having fun. Uh, my personal lobby in PS4 went 14-0, and 0, which was beautiful. So, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think that's that the great thing box. about Community Carnage is it's all about having fun, right? We play whatever game we're interested in. You know, it's not always Destiny. It wasn't always Halo back then. Uh, Pretty much anyone can host, too. So if anyone out there is interested in holding their own lobby and getting a little help with publicity, I mean, Community Carnage is great for that. Our Mm -hmm. only rule is that there will never, ever be any Gears of War Carnages. Those, (laughs) uh, Those were always awful. And when I say awful, I think we lost more people than we gained through those. Um, yeah, yeah, they were bad. But wrapping it up, I guess, um, unless anyone has something else they'd like to go on about. Uh, last any... message Last message on the carnage for me would be that definitely try to come in, because it's one thing to see someone post on the forums, you know, they'd have, definitely have a different voice. And then if you can come in and play with them in a game, you know, you can put a, a voice on that person, you can put a character on that person. You get to know them a hell of a lot better than simply interacting on the forums, and I'm always big on playing in game as opposed to just posting. So... Hey, come on in. It's a great way to get to know people. 
And if it doesn't work out, you can always blame Stosh. Blame Stosh. <laughs> All right, right, any last-minute shout-outs before we go? Uh, um, I don't think I so. have a shout-out. Keep right. an eye out um, for contests. Oh, oh yeah, yes. April. contests. April contests? Mm-hmm. What, what's yep. it going to be? Is it going to be another caption contest? I'm thinking a comic contest, actually. Oh, snap. Um, because some of, one of the people that placed in my uh, most recent Destiny Art contest drew a funny little um, comic about distracting people with glimmer chests in the crucible and it was really cute and i thought hey why not encourage people to draw pieces like this because comics you know they don't depend on artistic prowess they rely on a good punchline so all right sounds and good. art helps i think we'll need to get to and, and bungee ball that might be interesting yeah <laughs> that's amazing that. where my mind went straight to bungee ball bungee ball Ah, uh, that's going to be fun. All right, so I guess that's all for the Ask Planet podcast. Um, for more on our podcasts, the sub dates, and whatever else we may be working out, check out the 7th Conflux group. We've got a lot of cool stuff in the works. Oh, yeah, right. that's where you'll find the contest. And the contest, yes. Again, lots of cool stuff. So say goodbye, everyone. And thanks for listening. Whoever's listening. Yeah, whoever. Bye. <laughs>